Hello, 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 and welcome to the Press Y Podcast, episode 11. And uh, joining me today is Emerson. Patrick is not here. So, Emerson, you want to introduce yourself? What's up, dude? How you doing? Hello, partner. I'm doing good. Um, I am... <laughs> there's a good malice quote right there. Uh, I'm doing good. You can follow me at Twitter and Instagram at Omega Emerson. I never post anything, so go if you want to, but I'm just here now. I'm filling in for Pat while he is... AFK, and I'm probably yeah. not going to be invited back. No, nope, he's never coming back. This is a one-off, so get Emerson while you can. Yeah, so a little update on Patrick. Um, so the university, he goes to uh, the housekeeping service, um, threw away his switch <laughs> this week, so I, I still can't comprehend Let's how that Let's be honest, happened. they kept it. They, I mean, yeah. They totally kept it. They, they likely kept it. But uh, And then the university, once he filed a complaint, they basically told him to go F off. So uh, very cool. Good work, university. Um, but also he's, he's doing some, uh, some other like projects, big projects and stuff this week. So uh, Emerson's filling in for him. And uh, Emerson's really good at speaking and talking. So it's going to be a good episode. And uh, actually this week, uh, we have a lot of news to cover. Um, so it's, you know, it's October, it's spooky time. So we're going to go through uh, some of the games for this month. Uh, and we have so much news, like so much news. This is going to be a really long episode. So uh, Emerson, you, you chose a good one uh, to get forced onto. Well, thank you. Uh, I oh, appreciate sh- the uh, few hours of heads up I got. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start off and I'm going to um, list off here uh, some of the games coming Before we begin, month. we have to say... We, we do have the live footage from the Sword and Shield live stream pulled up right now. Okay. We're going we're gonna to update you if anything changes. Right now, we are still staring at a wallpaper. It is, it is in fact, a wallpaper. <laughs> but yeah, Emerson's going to keep us up to date on that. Emerson is very much a uh, Pokemon boy. And as you all know here on, on the Press Y podcast, me and Pat are not Pokemon stands. But uh, my boy Emerson here. I'm your Pokemon and it. Fire Emblem stand. I'm here for both yeah. of those. He can he can fill us in. like literally are the two weakest points on our podcast. He's able to fill us in. So uh, we're gonna get started here. I'm gonna talk about the month games coming out this month. So uh, Sniper Elite Three Ultimate Edition uh, just came out on the first. Um, oh, and by the way, we're recording the today's date of recording is the fourth. So uh, Friday the fourth. But yeah, so Sniper Elite came out this week on the first. Uh, Little Town Heroes out on the sixteenth. Uh, COD Modern Warfare and The Outer Worlds, both of which I'm very excited for. Especially, uh, very surprised that I'm excited for COD, but uh, that's coming out. Those are both coming out on the 25th. Uh, Luigi's Mansion on the 31st. Oh boy, oh man. Are you looking forward to this? Because I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to it, and I know people like it. I've never played one of the games, and they don't do anything for me in terms of marketing, but I'll be happy for people who are happy. Yeah, cool. So you'll be happy for me because I'm super excited. I'm very happy um, for you. Thank you so much. So, uh, and then other games I don't care about that are coming out: uh, Destiny Two, Shadow Keep, <laughs> an expansion yeah. for those of you grinding it out on Destiny Two. <laughs> Ghost Recon Breakpoint. It's Ghost Recon. It's a yearly franchise. Go for it. Uh, WWE Two K Twenty uh, for all you wrestling fans. Uh, Medieval. Okay, I'll actually say this one looks kind of interesting. Uh, it's a PS4 game. It's like a hack and slash kind of deal. It's a little little weird, but... Medieval does that. seem pretty nice in terms it, of, uh, one, being a legacy franchise, but two, also finally coming to a modern console. Yeah. I'm intrigued, I'll say. Yeah, I, very much intrigued, but not enough to uh, not enough to pull the trigger, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, not enough um, to press Y on that bad boy. No, I'm, not, I'm not, bro. I, like at the very least, I'm like, I'm pressing the home button to exit out and never see it again um <laughs> okay 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 so this is this is news we just got today actually uh red dead 2 is actually coming out to uh, coming to pc and stadia um so it's launching on november 5th on the rockstar launcher as well as epic games and uh gmg uh, and a couple other places uh, this is all on november 5th um it's also a launch title for stadia so whenever stadia launches in november it's going to launch with it uh, but funnily enough, the Steam launch isn't actually until December, so I actually don't know if this is an Epic Store exclusive or what. I don't believe there was a statement uh, or an Epic Store something kind of deal or other places kind of deal first. Uh, I didn't see a statement on this, um, so I'm sure there's there's some reason. Maybe they're getting Steam Workshop set up and all that, and they just want to have everything prepared. Uh, but I'm actually really excited about that. I played a little bit of Red Dead 2 on Xbox, but like, 
that's just a little bit. I, I, I was waiting on PC until I bought it. I just played it on a friend's. Ooh, uh, let's it's going to be a, oh. it's going to be a hefty thing for Stadia to run. We still don't know how efficient it's going to be once it hits mass use. Honestly, oh yeah, yeah. I think emphasis on mass use. Yeah, I'm really testing really is intrigued. one thing, but once it hits like once it becomes public and everyone's using it, either just the generic entry level or they're using their Stadia Bro Pass, whatever they do, once they start running things at this big, when their servers are already getting a lot of uh, use, this is going to really put it to the test where a game this visually intensive it really is and you know google was also promising like real real 4k experiences as well as high frame rate we'll see experiences. About that. I, yeah that's a big we'll see about that um and actually um we're going to talk more on streaming later because uh, playstation's actually just sliced the uh, the price of now uh, playstation now and we'll talk about that more in a bit um, oh, Emerson, I know you just bought a uh, Switch Lite. I did buy a Switch Looks Lite. Looks like there's a new one coming out, right? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Sort of, yeah. So there was an FCC filing for a, a new a new Switch Lite model, um, and then there was a picture of it, actually. Did you see the picture? I did. It actually looks pretty nice. It's I, so I'd cool. honestly prefer that to the white buttons. So uh, yeah. probably it's on oh, screen yeah, yeah. now, but it's basically yeah. it is the uh, Switch Gray uh, colors with a solid gray uh, buttons, uh, joystick control pad. It looks really nice. It looks really cool. Definitely looks like a dev unit, just 100%. because. I, yeah, but and and that's the thing it is it is a dev unit. I'm gonna clarify there. It's not gonna be a consumer product. It says specifically in the FCC documentation that um, th that it is a development unit as well as a unit for events. So you know it's it's cool like it's really cool yeah i doubt it has any of the joy con fixes that everyone wants that's actually kind of the reason oh, the we'll story. get to that part in a bit but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because this this is actually one of the reasons why the story blew up um outside of just people not reading into it and saying that it's a dev kit they're like oh okay maybe nintendo's coming out with a model of switch Lite that'll uh have improved joy cons but no it's literally just a, a dev model Really quick, I'm going to you... update you on the stream. Uh, the so my favorite comments are high quality animations. This steam is, or this stream is trash. And where are my parents? So this <laughs> <Where are> my <laughs> parents. <laughs> Nothing has happened no. yet at all. So I'm we're, we're watching, but yeah, I have little should, hope yet. You should ask them if anything has happened. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I typed in uh, since I joined. Has anything happened? And I get a reply saying basically this stream is a unique uh, comment only. Your comment is not unique. Meaning that has anything happened had been asked so much, it had been blocked by the stream. Yeah, so that, and they're that's, also that's just like attacking sign. you personally by saying you're not a very unique person. And no. You, you think like everybody else. So I'm truly you know, deeply way to, offended. Way to, go, way to go, Pokemon. Very cool. <laughs> very cool very, indeed. Very cool. Um, okay, what's next? Oh, Mario Kart Tour. Man, I'm just having so much fun with this game, right, Emerson? It's just, it's so much fun. I love free to I'm play still games. holding out on never playing this thing. <laughs> I'm not going to download it and help their absurd numbers already. It is a, it is a polished stinker. I will say that. But, <laughs> so Mario Kart Tour is growing. In fact, uh, in the first day, the game was downloaded 10.1 million times globally. Uh, and so for some perspective here, it surpassed Pokemon Go, uh, which was downloaded 6.7 million times on the first day, and then Super Mario Run, which was downloaded 7 million times the first day. Uh, and for the whole first week, the entirety of downloads was like 90.1 million, and the second closest is Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, which was like at 14-something million. So this is a... <laughs> I calculated it. It's a 530% increase in first, first week downloads uh, uh, like over their next biggest game on mobile, which is Animal Crossing, as I said. That's pretty crazy. And it's not a huge surprise either because, I mean, Mario Kart's literally like one of Nintendo's biggest fan franchises. You know, and it's th that's not very surprising. Like It, it reaches no, so Mario many Kart different Mario Kart also people. has a very low barrier to entry. It's a super easy game, especially with this one where it basically plays for you. On top of being Bro. such a recognizable game. It's very recognizable. But I will say that, Drew, the mirror mode, that's hard. So it's Mario Kart isn't just for the faint of heart. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, so yeah, it's it's doing very, very well. Again, like 
I'm sure you've played it at this point and you've seen reviews, but it's kind of a stinker, very much free to play model. You want to pretty much buy everything, but the people you're racing aren't actually people. It's just names of other users. And then they just attach those names to bots. So it makes you feel as if, you know, every time you win, you're just that good. Should we refer to it as Mario Kart, given that Mario is unlockable and also very unlikely to be, ever be unlocked? Yeah, that's the other thing. I prefer it's, it's Monumental Kart, to be honest. It's just, it's just Kart. Yeah, you know, it's, it's no Mario. Gotcha Kart, gotcha Kart, because um, you literally have to pay for Mario. <laughs> to pay for the main character of a Mario game, I love it. Um, okay, so let's talk about the revenue here, and I'll let you do the analysis, but... Uh, in the first 24 hours, it made like $1 million in revenue. Uh, this is actually a lot lower than um, their other other Nintendo mobile apps. Uh, so for perspective, it's actually the third uh, highest grossing in revenue. And uh, the second and first being, uh, let's see, Super Mario Run at $4 million in revenue the first day. And then $4.3 million of revenue for Fire Emblem uh, Heroes. And so uh, that's that's a lot lower than their other franchises. And Emerson, you had some thoughts on that, right? Yeah. So my reason why I think Fire Emblem Heroes especially sold so high is that people would buy it for the characters. People have attachments to the characters. Like even last night when we were playing Smash Bros, we had a Hector join the arena. And I said, well, there's a man of class right there. Because people love Hector. Not that he wields a big, a mean axe, but that he has, he keeps his brother's illness a secret and his relationship with El- El- Elliewood and Lynn and Nils. He's such a great character. People love the Fire Emblem characters. And one thing that Fire Emblem Heroes has that Mario Kart doesn't have is a whole lot of fan service. You want an HD picture <laughs> so of your of, so many cringy of 20 versions of Lynn? Well, here you go. There's a, another Lynn alt coming soon. I guarantee it. You want more Camilla? Sure. She has big melons, quite literally. There was oh, a, God. there was a, I think that was her, but they had uh, like one where they were holding watermelons. Like, ah, oh, we get it. But uh, Wait, did Fire they Emblem, actually do that? They did. Tell it, was me for, they didn't. it was for no. summer. I think it was a summer event. I think no. it was last year. But yeah, they had they people holding melons who ironically Bro, had people, big melons. I'm I'm sure all the incels playing that just. <laughs> <that up. laughs> well, they're going just to see Joker this up. weekend. Yeah, because <laughs> society. Yeah. <laughs> From Fire Emblem Heroes to Joker, the making of a murderer. But I, <laughs> but I think you make a, a really solid point. Like, yeah, of course, there's like characters in Mario Kart, and everyone has. I guess their main or the person they always like to play in Mario Kart, but with Fire Emblem, there's so much more like story and attachment and depth to the characters. And again, yeah. the whole waifus thing too. Which even I'm, for a lot of the I'm older characters, they don't have HD sprites or HD uh, at least photos or HD models outside of Heroes. But once Heroes came, it was like, well, we're gonna get an HD Ike, we're gonna get an HD Elliewood. People that have been stuck in the GBA and the only art for them, like for Ephraim, was from the Fire Emblem Sacred Stones box art. And then up until like we had a brand new Ephraim at launch for Heroes, for his world of, I think, Sacred Stones, I can't remember what it's called, but his game. And that's why it was so nice to have that. People buy it for the character. I want to collect the yeah, all the Grima all the alls. Characters. I want to have the, I want the female uh, Morgan all because she's better than the male Morgan. Fight me. But it, it's kind of cool. That everyone buys God. it for the characters because the characters yeah. and their art, ultimately, they're the end game. Like, I played yeah. Heroes for maybe for, for a while, but you never did it to use them in battle. At least for me, I got the characters to collect my favorite characters. And that's yeah. why I think that is much more of a seller than uh, Mario Kart is for, well, do you want to unlock your Mario? Yeah, do you like, want to unlock, well, even just like carts and stuff. Like, sure, because even cares? for like, if for, I can get first place every yeah. game, like, I don't care. And yeah, I think even with I Mario think Kart they, 8, I mean, my go to was, uh, at least for the Wii U one, was um, Metal Mario. And I was not freaking out that I didn't have him at launch, I don't believe. So it was like, sure, I'll unlock a character. I like the way they play or his uh, weight and class and everything he's in, sure. But with Mario Kart, ultimately, it, the race is the content. The character it's, that's, is just that's a visual literally the content. To it. Yeah, yeah. And I and again in Mario Kart Tour, if you play the right character for a certain course, you can get like item bonuses and stuff, which is yeah. also BS. But like, I, I I can still easily get first place on most races. Yeah. That well, kind I of think Nintendo abuse. has to be disappointed in the turnout because they I, they yeah. view Super Other Mario the Run as a failure. Are, they viewed that again? as that again? they viewed Super Mario Run as a letdown. They which because, is crazy because yeah, I mean that still made a lot of money. Yeah, because so, in that yeah. and that also was like a a one like you could do I think the first world or something. You and do then the you first I think bucks. five levels. Yeah, the first world for yeah. uh, free, and then you pay for the rest, a one time fee. So yeah. I because I think they saw that that and then Dragalia Lost both didn't perform well. And Dragalia Lost had microtransactions. Never mind. There's one other game I think they had that was a one time purchase. 
I can't place it right now if there was one. Was but it Miitopia? I think, no, Miitopia was free. Or yeah, Mi, was I, I, I do no, think, Mitomo, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm saying, I think that they were hoping, like, with the, okay, we'll do a one-time transaction just to have the game be done. And mm -hmm. according to them, with their absurd expectations, a Super Mario run, the millions of dollars it made wasn't quite enough. Look at Fire Emblem Heroes, where people are throwing money at Lin Alts. And so we, we do, should do that again. And we're also going to have a subscription service for the thing. You want to unlock the That's 200cc, more expensive the fast than... game. You, so do you want to buy a Switch game? Or do you want to spend a year on Super Mario or Mario Kart Tour? Like, really? Or just, like, Switch Online membership is, like, what, 20 bucks a it's year? 20 bucks, it's 2 bucks a month <laughs> if you want to pay for it monthly. So you can get the Super Nintendo library, the NES library, and online access to all the Switch games for $2 a month. Or do you want to spend $5 a month and get 200cc and a couple carts and well, that's basically it right there's not Bro, much i on want there. some carts i want some carts actually no get... you don't get the carts. if i remember correctly you get uh, <laughs> you the just... chance to unlock the cart no yeah you just get the chance you just get like currency and stuff um i okay i do want to offer kind of an opinion here and i haven't seen a lot of people taking taking this uh, opinion or even thought this through very well but um honestly even though you know the mobile game um how do i describe it the mobile game business tactic in my opinion, is pretty scummy, just regardless of who does it. Um, I, I think it is pretty scummy. Uh, I think that Nintendo putting mo games on mobile, like iPhone and Android, I think that them doing it in this way is perfectly acceptable. And I'd rather them do it in this way than do like full-fledged releases because then it takes away the point of buying a Switch or the point of, you know, I guess not buying a 3DS sure. at this point, but basically so, the point of yeah. playing their actual games. Because you're playing, you're playing a spinoff, a very much a spinoff, and so that pulls you into their their main product line. And I think that's, and it's pretty apparent that that's their business strategy, outside of just making money off of the very, very, very large. Well, they also market. do want to continuously make money as well. So I, I get that. Although I tend to prefer the Super Mario Runway, where you pay for it once you own the game. Because I would like to see a lot of the GBA games on iOS or Android. I, just, like, I think the if you cut it there and don't go higher than that, you can put like, a lot of GBA games rather than GBA for iOS. Or I currently use uh, Eclipse to play GBA games on my phone. Don't sue me. Uh, but I'm... Wait, I, wait. Are you saying you download stuff illegal? Oh, no. You just back up your own ROMs, right? Oh, uh, yeah, totally. I, I, I own all my ROMs. <laughs> <laughs> Even the ones on my homebrew 3DS. Oh, darn it. I did it again. Okay, so uh, I think I think it'd be cool to have like a GBA library or like, just something like this portable because it'd be kind of cool to be have Kirby or Fire Emblem or Pokemon, something portable on the G on like a GBA game on your phone rather than having to go through and, and exploit and do it through a browser or something. That's why I just like the idea of having uh, games they already have with no, you can, all you can do is, um, you don't even have to upgrade it because it's still a small device. You can just put it on there. And have your GBA library, or just your Game Boy library. Even you can do the first Shantae. You can do fun things like that. I still think I still think that I'm it's mobile. better that they leave that for something on Switch because are again, they ever going to get it, there? Though is the thing. Well, well, I mean, it's entirely possible. Uh, but I think that having those, like I guess, full fledged Nintendo games on their actual hardware, it adds an extra an extra barrier of entry, which is so purchasing a two hundred yeah. or three hundred dollar Switch. But the thing is is they're, they're betting on the appeal from the mobile apps and uh, from like the recognition of the brands from the mobile apps will uh, you know continue into purchases yeah. of their hardware. So I think that's the business. I think that's what they're trying to do with put up Pokemon Masters, where it's, just, it's an unfinished yeah. game. It seem, it's fine, but it's just this, okay, it's Pokemon battling, uh, triple battles, which have been around since I think 2010 with Pokemon Black and White, if I get the year right. But it's like triple battles have been around for a while. We're going to just put that as the only thing in the mobile game. And it's like, well, are you hyped for Pokemon? And like, not really. Like, well, okay, well, there's more coming out. Uh, stay tuned for Sword and Shield. I, I get Which the whole I still thing think of, is going to sell so much. Everyone who says there's not, they're not going to no, buy it. Is buy it. Well, it's, I, I'm on the anti hype train. I'm still going to buy it. So that's where, like, <laughs> see, I told you, I, I've, I've had my heart crushed for, with every new thing, basically up, up until the um, Galar forms were announced, and they chose my favorite Pokemon of all time, quite literally Zigzagoon. Jimmy the Grave Digger is getting in a Galar form which actually fits my nickname for him. I'm so happy about that. He's getting the evolution as well. But, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Speaking of Pokemon, real quick, check the live stream. Have you seen anything? I've been watching the live stream. The chat's hilarious. Uh, nothing has happened. So that's been, that's been the running joke. As people are saying, there's a Mew under the truck, which is an inside joke if you get old there's Pokemon. A there's an Amiibo under there's the truck? There's a Mew under the truck. Oh, I thought you said that. Because that was an old okay. conspiracy theory that under the truck uh, in, po in red and blue, if you use strength on the truck, which is a one-time occurrence, if you can get there, you can then get Mew. 
And so that's been the whole joke. Everyone's just going out on all these. Like, the chat's hilarious, honestly, but nothing has happened with the live stream so far that I've seen. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get yeah, back to that in a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's move on from Mario Kart Tour. Uh, I believe we've communicated <laughs> yeah. our opinions. I wholly expected a smash letter to gently float down and a Pidgey picks it up. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. All right, let's see what, what's up next. Okay, just sticking on the trend of mobile, I'm literally just going to say this and move on. But yeah. uh, COD Mobile was released. The only reason I'm putting that out there is because that's, that's a pretty big release for a mobile game. Um, yeah, obviously a huge franchise. I don't yeah. really care. It's free to play, has free to play mechanics, but like it's still COD. It, it looks better than it has any right to be for a COD mobile game. I'll it, say that. Honestly though, like like I, I this is gonna sound cringy, but like the graphics are actually <laughs> kind of good. I saw this game has good thought, water. That looks pretty solid. <laughs> it it actually looks like yeah, I don't know. I think I think um that's I actually that's kind of a topic I want to touch on real quick is like mobile gra- mobile game graphics and just a mobile game like graphic design in general has just gotten so good because of the power of just the way the uh power the within. apis are on iphone especially P- uh, g- uh, game developers are just able to get so much out of the hardware yeah um okay Although let's see what's you're gonna next. absolutely murder your phone's battery yeah and overheat your phone yeah let's see oh okay uh so the mario and luigi developer alpha dream uh alpha dream just had its worst nightmare i think that might be kind of a bad joke because uh a bunch of people just lost their jobs the company just went bankrupt um this is the company uh, obviously knows most known uh, as well as responsible for the uh mario and luigi series uh that's been around since superstar saga uh i mean they they, they literally made the original mario and luigi game um so they were actually four million yen in debt, which is equates to three point seven million dollars here in the United States. And I, I mean, I know a lot of people are super into the series. Uh, I've only played a couple of the games, and I mean, I like them all right. Uh, but it's it's pretty unfortunate that, that the developer is out of business. Um, but for kind of a bright side, a little uh, a little, little tidbit for you, uh, Leon Robertson on Twitter. He's one of the guys that helps with you know gaming. Um, he actually stated that one of their projects, one of the recent projects, is actually a Switch product, and it seems to be complete and it's still going to be released. So uh, their involvement on it hasn't been announced, but uh, it's it's the project's going to be released. So I, it's probably a Mario and Luigi game. I mean, that'd be my guess, unless they they were helping with something else. But you know, I I saw some people say on Twitter like, "Oh man, so that means they're going to start investing in Paper Mario." And that's my uh, hope. No, nope. <laughs> there's no way. Like, no, come on. Let's well, let's get. I, I think just in general, they're kind of gun shy for uh, remasters slash remakes if they're going to do like an older game. Due to you had the no, Smash, I just mean like you going Mario Wii U with... ports. You had a Superstar Saga. No one bought that with the combination of that and uh, Bowser's Inside Story. No one got either of those. And so I think they're kind of gun shy with Mario remasters right now. If they're going to do anything, they're going to keep going with Paper Mario in the way it's been with Color Splash, which is kind of gross. But yeah, we're never going to get well, the okay. uh, Super Mario. Well, we also had Super the Mario we, or the uh, Passing Your Door remaster. I don't think. Yeah, I, I was going to say the there was that hashtag. Was it like a, two, a month or two ago of the remaster Thousand Year Door? And even the the developer of Paper Mario, or the I'm sorry, the director of Paper Mar- Paper Mario. Um, I believe she said something along the lines of, well, if there's enough fan outcry, we'll bring the series back to where it was. Is it their or call we'll, to make, though? Because I, I mean, it's kind of like when you have... The, she's the director, and so if she can... I, I'm, this is me just assuming how the process goes, is they come up, they, they write up a project, and then they... Uh, or her team writes up a project, presents it to her. You know, she, she kind of gets a... Uh, she approves it. I don't know if she has the discretion to st- flat out approve whatever project she wants. Or she has to go bring it to someone else for approval. But um, I mean, in an interview, they said a while back that uh, you know they'll take a look at you know. Sure, but would you need Nintendo as a publisher to okay it as well? Because you can make the game, but you can't publish the game. That helps nobody. So I think yeah, Nintendo has I, to I okay to it as up. well. Yeah, it just it depends on how many points of like delegation they have. Yeah, because I'm sure they they give a, a good bit of freedom to their directors because well, they can't. To be, be fair, I kind of feel like the director saying that is kind of when you had the people from Square being like, "We'd love a character in Smash." Like everyone wants a character in Smash. You guys like, like Wait, when they had, but they have Cloud in Smash. Well, they, after that, they said like, "Remember, basically, when they're out in their box when they're moving out and their company's crashing, they're like, please help us. We'd love a character in Smash.'" <laughs> well, we got Cloud, and then we got. All the heroes. We do. So. We have all the heroes. <laughs> Which I forget in the square. But yeah, so 
I mean, it's a possibility that Paper Mario comes back, but I, honestly, I think like there's more invested in Mario, the Mario and Luigi series, so I, I, I feel like we'd see that. Yeah, cause I think the reason why that is yeah. due to Superstar Saga, because that was the one that everyone had on Game Boy. Like if, yeah. if you went to the bank, they had that on like their test Game Boys they used to have. They had that and they had like um, oh, Super those. Mario World, right? Oh. On the SNES one on the Game Boy. They had those two yeah. games were always there. And so yeah. they put Pokemon Ruby every now and then too. You get a Pokemon game sometimes, but you go to the bank, your parents be doing something important and you'd be over on the Game Boy cranking out a Mario. Who's actually doing the most important thing? Yeah, take that, Gaming parents. is the most important. But that's also too. All right, we're moving on. Well, Wait, let's, really let's quickly, move on. <laughs> really quickly, the reason why is the Game Boy version of that sold much more than any version of Paper Mario did. Because yeah. so everyone's more familiar with that, even though Paper Mario may have better games, the uh, Mario and Luigi franchise had a much more noticeable and much more larger fan base at, at any point in time. Yeah, I will. I will say. I re- I honestly think that if they did like a remaster of Thousand Year Door or something, I think that it would sell pretty adequately, uh, just because of how long the game's been out and how how much of every like more people know about it now than back then because it's become essentially a, a classic. To yeah. A cult classic. Also, one quick question: but, How does yeah, a company yeah. that does one game every four years or so? How do they get in debt? Are they just paying people for doing nothing? Honestly, my guess, just thinking about this purely business wise, is like. Nintendo comes to them, says, "Hey, we need. We're gonna order a Mario Luigi game." Like, okay, and then they're just not the, the amount of money that Nintendo gives them. They miss either mismanage it, they um, are under budget, and so they end up going over budget. Or I'm sorry, they they don't have enough resources to, or they don't have enough resources with the budget that they're given in order to produce the game. They're terrible at spending. There's so many different reasons. You know, maybe they have a bunch of um, overtime, not, not overtime, but I, I don't know. There's just so many different business reasons that it could be. It's probably just a mismanagement of funds, a lack of efficiency, or they weren't asking Nintendo for enough for the project. Mm-hmm. So, or projects rather. So that was kind of a bummer for them. But so, yeah, there's some some insight. Yeah. Uh, ooh, okay, I'm excited about Here's this a fun one. topic. This is this is. I did you okay? So Brain Age is back. Oh baby, oh, yeah. it's back. I had Brain Age on my DS when I was a little kid. It was a I required DS Age. game for every child to have. I had it as well. It, it was a it great was like game. So much fun. It's like it's it's quality and it's fun. And also, I'd marry Doctor Kawashima like in a heartbeat. So, but yeah. So uh, there was a, a Japanese trailer dropped for Brain Age on the Switch. Um, currently, it's just gonna be released on the Switch, or I'm sorry, on the Switch in Japan. Um, so it's, you know, it has like the classic math game where you like, you know, you write, you write math, uh, or you write the answers to math problems. <laughs> There's also one that uses the, like the IR sensor in the, the right joy card. Which it follows Nintendo's, uh, track record of making things way overcomplicated. Yeah, but okay. But th- this mini game looked pretty fun. So it, like, it would show like a person holding two fingers and a person, or I'm sorry, a hand with two fingers and a hand with three fingers. I mean, they have all their fingers. It's just the fingers are raised. And then you have to like so if it's two and a three, then you hold up a five with your hand. And so it's it's pretty cool, honestly. I think it's it's, it's definitely cool. neat. It's, it's them pushing their uh, tech to as far as it'll go because they, they do really neat things with their IR sensor with Lalo especially. Uh-huh. But it's like, do we really need to hold your hand up to prove you can count two plus three? Well, I think other than it just being like gimmicky, I think it's, there's probably some like like physical response aspect to it. I don't know. But regardless, there's other mini games. There's like a counter one where you and a friend both hold a Joy-Con and it'll like there'll be like pigeons or apples or something on screen and you have to count how many there are based off of quantity or color or both. And uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but, 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 but there's oh, there's like a Dr. Mario mini game with its own like Dr. Mario theme uh, that they made for, <laughs> for, for Brain Age. <laughs> so it's cool. I mean, I don't know if it'll ever or when rather it will be released in the United States. Cause there's a lot of localizing to do with that. But, uh, I really hope they, I really hope they localize it and bring it to the States. Uh, the other interesting thing with that is a, uh, an official switch stylus is being released in tandem with the game, which is actually pretty cool. It's surprising to them this long to do. I know. And I, I was going to just make a hunk of plastic and sell it for $30 cause you're Nintendo and they have <laughs> waited on yeah. this thing until brain age. Like, okay, yeah, sure. And- I just I hate that there's no like I when when they when they announced the Switch Lite, I I was expecting some form of stylus. Yeah, I thought the DSi XL is coming with this big old hunk of plastic, and unfortunately, it never did. 
Yeah, but, like, I, I get that why for be... Brandon Stewart because you got to write a, uh, yeah. a a noticeable number, something that's legible. Although, mm-hmm. like in terms of even typing on the Switch, my big old sausage fingers can't make it work. I have to like peck <laughs> at it because <laughs> I, <laughs> my little Vienna sausages can't handle it. Okay, but so right. <laughs> I get why it's coming out now, but it feels like this should have been available recently, if not a long time ago. Yeah, and they've they've even like added controls or uh, touch screen options that like calibrate it for for styluses as well and this is i mean for people who love mario maker 2 or like love creating in mario maker 2 this is probably a pretty big deal yeah. for you uh unless you already bought a ten dollar stylus on amazon which does the exact same yes. thing just doesn't say nintendo <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Brandy how much is back. that red stripe Brandy. worth to you yeah seriously it's not even red it's like it's like all gray um it's actually pretty it's pretty classy it's pretty pretty classy but again probably not worth the 20 or 30 dollars yeah. that it is so actually Man, what's your bet? Um, what, what, what do you think it's gonna sell for i'm gonna bet 14.99 i'm gonna bet 15 bucks 14.99 yeah because i mean my head's telling me it's yeah, over but my heart's fair. saying there's no way they're gonna sell it for more than 15 bucks but i this is you know i'm gonna i'm actually not gonna bet against you i honestly think it's gonna sell for that price as well that that are 20 dollars, but likely 15 um, I mean, it's kind of a hard sell after that point. Yeah, <laughs> a piece of plastic. <laughs> but hey, especially when you have, collector. especially when you hopefully have ten attached to your body. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for various reasons. For various reasons, maybe eleven. Yeah. Okay. So also maybe one like... thing uh, with stream update is they, there have been certain cries heard, Pokemon cries, but they've not showed anything new in three hours. Although I will say, best comment I've seen recently: Who is that Pokemon? It's nobody. It's so nobody. <laughs> I just love that someone had to take the time to render a 24-hour stream. <laughs> people are saying like I'm hashtag miserable. team mushroom. All you see are these like mushrooms in the forest. And nothing has happened other than you hear an occasional cry every now and then. Like, well, there is something making a cry. Can you please put it on screen? It's, Otherwise, this is, a, this is such a waste of time. Uh, yeah, we yeah we watch in anticipation regardless. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Jeff Kaplan, our boy at Blizzard, head of Overwatch, wants uh, any and all Overwatch characters in Smash. And Brothers. yes, I have a phone. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a recent statement. Uh, he was very direct and telling uh, what he called the Smash Bros team. We just refer to that as Sakurai. Uh, to take whatever Overwatch character they want, like he literally said, just literally all of them. So his one part of his quotes quote said that he he referred to all the Overwatch characters as his quote babies, uh, and he said quote they can have e- any single one of them. So uh, Sakurai, if you want Jeff Kaplan's babies, uh, <laughs> it's, it's an open offer. Maybe it's rephrase that. <laughs> There's yeah, you could have my babies. An open Sakurai. Offer. Um, so Kaplan, Kaplan said that like his obvious pick is Tracer. Yeah. Uh, just because she's the mascot of the game. Although I think and, there like, is one more obvious pick. Who? They're going to put this character in Smash. It's going to be absolutely busted. So that way they can say hashtag Nerf Bastion. Oh, Bastion. God. Nerf Bastion. It's, it's literally, you just run to the corner of the stage, set up in turret mode. But it's no, like the they can play into character. the meme. It would be great. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless... I, I think and we we would discuss this a little bit yeah. before we started before we started going, but um, I think having an Overwatch character uh, would be really cool. I mean, obviously, yeah, everyone would say that, but you know, having a character from Overwatch is also having a character that represents you know FPS games, and I think Overwatch really stands out as a um, like a top of the line. Uh, and very <laughs> so, like very impact, have, impactful sorry. FPS. I've got to say this. <laughs> Is well, this okay, supposed to ahead. be a real life? Because real life doesn't have Pokemon either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, okay, like as far as as far as like standout FPS games go, Overwatch, Overwatch is, is definitely that. Up. It took off. It's crazy. It's crazy how big that game got. Yeah, but you had some thoughts about this before. So we the reason why I'm opposed to this, I'm totally fine with a me skin or anything that is like or music from there. I don't think I should do a character too because I couldn't think of anyone on the roster who is not from a legacy franchise from a single game in terms of the, this franchise is a one game franchise that's this new or that wasn't a Nintendo hardware like we Fit, uh, Rob, and Game & Watch. Because even the, the newest one I think of is Splatoon. 
but those also have more than one game. I don't think Smash should put in fad characters because I have I, I don't I kind of the question of okay, will they put a Fortnite character in because it's huge now? What about in five years? Would that be a waste of a slot if they keep that in Ultimate? Because it wouldn't have the same. No, because it's Fortnite. It'll be gone. Dude, in I, a few just want, years. I just want. I just want. I just want like the taunt to be the default dance. <laughs> it'd be so funny. Sorry, go ahead. Well, what I'm trying to think is, I'm trying to say is, I don't think it'd be good to put a current fad into Smash because we have no idea that this is going to be a legacy. Because things like Castlevania, they've been around forever. They've had several games. Seeing them come in, that's big. Or someone like Fire Emblem, they've been around longer than Kirby has. You got Mario. It's Mario, of course. You have even with the, the uh, new ones. You've had Persona been around, it's been around since the PS1, I believe. It might have been Super Nintendo, but I think it was PS1 was the first Persona game. Um, things that have been around forever, or even things like, like Splatoon have been around more recently, but they have a franchise. It's more than one game. That's why my, my thing is for a current one-game fad, is that worthy of Smash in terms of these things are going to yeah. be around for years? Yeah. That's where I have some, that. Uh, that so kind what of do you with, think with like Sands. a better pick would be? Well, with what? So I, I mentioned that like it was like tra- having Tracer or someone from Overwatch wouldn't just be representing Overwatch; it would be representing kind of the FPS yeah. genre because there's really no one in Smash that's like that. So who else do you think would be a good representative? In terms of the crossover, I'd love Master Chief, but we talked about this beforehand. That'd We'd be love so cool. Doom Guy. Doom Guy would be Doom awesome. Guy's so cool because such a Nintendo game. crossover. <laughs> Nintendo's been going hard into Doom recently. That'd be yeah, awesome to have. Even had- yeah, and they even had like Doom sixty four coming yeah. out on the Switch, or is that already out? I, I think it's already out. Check that. Yeah, it could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I could definitely be wrong. But yeah, I think you know Master Chief would be cool. And again, Halo is an extremely important franchise. Well, it was an extremely important yeah. franchise. Um, but I think Doom's legacy uh, in the shooter genre is almost unrivaled. Uh, obviously, there's like, although if they did want to cross streams, James Bond would be awesome. Oh, from, <laughs> I freaking have it has uh, to be uh, the original like polygonal uh, sprite, the, yeah, the very like nine. rigid James Bond from the N sixty four. I want him for Smash. That would be awesome. Or um, so I actually tweeted this out on our account, but like CSGO is also you know yeah. fairly or Counter Strike in general is like a good representative of the FPS genre, the genre. So. I think they should put nameless terrorist in, in Smash Bros. And so whenever the, whenever the character wins, the, the announcer's like, terrorist wins. <laughs> I would love it if the uh, different skins were different terrorist factions. So it'd be Al-Qaeda wins, depending on oh what the, <laughs> depending on what the, uh, well, well, no, 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 wait, but there's not, there's be. not that, there's not like, it's just the terrorist. No, I know it's just generic terrorists, terrorists yeah. but I think it'd be so funny <laughs> to just yeah. modernize it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I'm gonna make a named terrorist into just a me. Yeah. So, well, we I'll made some crazy me. So we can, we have we can some definitely make unnamed terrorists at some point that we probably shouldn't discuss on stream <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, I like to be employed. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So we got a couple more stories here. These are these are a bit smaller, and then we're gonna get into our press. Why this is? Uh, we're kind of making up for last week. Uh, obviously, it's a very short episode. Um, but we I had some. And the first step to make up for last week was replacing Pat with me. Let's just be yeah. honest. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Patrick. If you listen to this whole thing, I'm I'm very sorry. Uh, okay, minute is free on the Epic Game Store. This is a Devolver Digital game. So speaking of Patrick, ding ding ding, go get your Devolver Digital. He loves Devolver Digital. Uh, it's a it's like 60 second adventures, black and white, pixelated, interesting. Uh, I picked it up. I haven't played it, but maybe eventually i just have so many games i have like so many free games from the epic game store that i just am gonna play eventually probably maybe before i die i don't know we'll see but it's if you're interested in that go do it go get it uh speaking of games <laughs> Ooh. that's our whole our whole podcast Palmer. um untitled goose game is <laughs> this week was actually the number one on the switch bestsellers list uh so the the publisher panic uh one of the employees uh cabell or cable I don't know how you say his name. I tweeted out his his uh, joy for the situation uh, this week, but uh, very cool. You know, it's it's you know it looks like a cute little fun fifteen dollar or twenty dollar game. We've talked about it on the podcast previously. I've I've been meaning to pick it up, but uh, I'm just trying to get through other stuff right now. But it's it's pretty cool. It's cool that it's uh, number one on the charts, and it's always cool to see like smaller developers you know have have pretty large success, uh, especially over something that's like this this kind of ridiculous. 
Um, oh, and then our very last story for this week. Um, oh, Sony has just cut the price of uh, PlayStation Now. So PlayStation Now. Did you know about PlayStation Now, Emerson? I did. As a PS4 mm-hmm. owner, I knew about it, and I said I would never buy it because that is ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like it's uh, not Nintendo. It's Sony streaming service, yeah. and so you can get a bunch of different games on it. There's a lot of legacy games on there, but they actually just slashed the uh, all the uh, price tiers. So the monthly tier went from twenty dollars to ten dollars. The quarterly tier went from forty five to twenty five. Twelve month went from hundred to sixty. So uh, they also added Uncharted Four, uh, GTA Five, and as well as the new God of or the latest God of War, rather. Um, all to the streaming service, which is really cool. So it shows that they're committing pretty hard to this. Uh, they're also going to cut, I, I believe they're cutting a TV ad for it as well, uh, just as an option for people. Because again, now they, Sony they is definitely need dipping to, the, Especially when I every competitor was much cheaper. Like you had, I have a friend I talked to about this with the, uh, he's an Xbox user, and he was telling me about the Game Pass. Like I think it's, it is 10, is it? 10 a month or is it like i believe it's 10 a month game pass yeah. is a pretty good deal he was telling yeah. me about that he's like that's why really it's from ps4 is is the game pass because i can get a lot of games for 10 bucks a month rather than uh 20 because it, it saves me money even though i know it's less games i would want to play on here but yeah. overall it's the cost benefit of well i'd rather just be cheaper and play most of the games i want rather than double my price monthly and get all the games i want so this was a necessary yeah. cut to make but also to <laughs> Uh, it was never a good cost to begin with because the value you got was never equivalent to what you put into it unless you were going hard every month. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like, with like the if you pay monthly for the uh, online for Nintendo or even or something like PS Now or uh, Game Pass, if you're going to pay monthly, it should be okay to forget about a month and think, oh, that wasn't a waste. Like with Nintendo, oh, two bucks a month, that's fine. I didn't play anything this yeah, month that was busy, but I didn't lose anything. Whereas with, uh, I think- with Sony, you're like, oh, God, there goes 20 bucks down the drain. Yeah, but I also think I also think like the value added to this as well, outside of just having you know modern titles on there, modern titles on there rather than just legacy stuff, is that uh, it's it's a streaming service, so you yes. can stream on your PC or you can stream on your console, or I, you're just your PS4. You can't stream it on Xbox, obviously, but that's cool. Like that's really cool. Like if you know if I wanted to stream Uncharted Four on my PC, you just give them ten bucks. For the month, and I can yeah, I can just stream Uncharted Four. That's that's really especially cool. with a game like that, or a lot of the God of War, a lot of the modern games that are that are really uh, revered. Ten bucks a month, yeah. That's just that's worth the price of one game. That's a steal. Yeah, that is a steal. It is a steal. That's so, why this is a great thing to do, especially too. They're gonna make it more public. Like, hey, okay, Sony, sure, we have the console that more people have, and we have some better exclusives, debatably. But I tend to rely on that side. But they're also saying, okay, now we're we're competing with uh, Xbox rather than just saying well, we have our install base. Now, we're going to get as much out of you as we can. They're trying to be more user-friendly and hopefully trying to... I think they're trying to build their Sony uh, base going into PS5. Yeah, Cause, like they need to. Well, if you go into <laughs> they PS5 don't need to at all. And they have so many people. Cut, if this wasn't cut before PS5, that would be a big decision going into the next generation. So this is, I think, well, I, well also, you got you to gotta, like, see what, what their focus is on in the moment. Obviously, the PS5 is coming up, but their focus is yeah. wholly on the PS4 as well as the service. Why would they... Oh, excuse me. There's no reason for them to advertise this service whenever they'd want to be focusing on a brand new launch of a console. Yeah. So they're kind of getting ahead of the game and making it a known option. Yeah. Um. So I think that this is going to be. Uh. This is probably going to go over really well for them. Yeah. At least I hope it does because I, I love seeing competition because more competition, more cheaper it prices forces everyone like to do better. So that's something we can yeah. tend to agree on. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Well, so that's it for our news stories this mm-hmm. week. But like every Press Y podcast, we got to be pressing as, as the name something. suggests, there is a point as to this podcast. Yeah, I know you're probably all wondering whether or not we we're going to press it. And we're, we're pressing Y. Also, well, Emerson, we can press the good. B button to go a little faster next time. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, we're at, we're no, at, we're we at like 40, 45 minutes, bad, something yeah. like that. That's, dude, that's, no, that's really good. Yeah. Again, we're making up for well, we are week. We are going much faster, much better paced than the live stream. They've had five Pokemon in seven hours, so... Oh, oh, oh is, that, is that what it's at? Apparently. Um, Let's go through the all chat. Right, so yeah. I'm going to let you uh, press Y first since you're okay, my well, guest. Well, first off, I'm going to throw in a press X for this live stream because I'm never. This is such a waste of time. Pokemon has gone from making Pokemon to now making mid quality wallpapers. 
That being said, I'm going to press Y on the Metroid Prime Trilogy. I finished the third game uh, this week. I played the first two on GameCube and the third one on Wii uh, because I wanted to play them as they were originally made just to get the experience. And as it progressed, there were ups and downs, although honestly, they were all great. Um, The first two kind of have that old retro design flaw where there's, okay, well, there's something hidden somewhere. Go find it. Without a guide, good luck. You're going to explore everything. So you blow up a certain wall you didn't know was actually explodable. Have fun. But um, 3 was a lot more user-friendly, even though it made it result in being a much easier game. I tended to enjoy 3 the most. 2 was, I think, my least favorite due to Morph Ball bosses in a game that was not optimized for the Morph Ball. But ultimately, all three games, I really enjoyed them. Uh, I've moved on to Other M right now, and I'm suffering through it. But it, it's grown on me. But definitely Metroid Prime Trilogy. If you can, pick it up. Uh, if, you're, if you have to result, if you have to uh, resort to skipping one, skip two. Because the uh, weapon system in there is kind of gross. The uh, Dark Aether is kind of gross. And uh, it's ultimately, the game controls are a bit kind of gross. Anyway, that's my press Y for the week. Oh, well, there you go. So go check out, uh, yeah, go check that out. Uh, my press Y this week uh, is LAN parties. LAN parties are really cool. So uh, actually, my university is hosting one. Uh, the Esports Association is hosting hosting one tomorrow at the uh, in the press box of our stadium, and our stadium's really nice. So I'm super pumped for that. Uh, I'm gonna go and do. I'm entering the uh, ultimate singles, um, <laughs> Smash Ultimate <laughs> Singles. I'm going to the ultimate singles. <laughs> yeah, that's a big yeah, move. So I'm entering. I'm entering into the the Smash Ultimate single, so it's gonna be my first tourney. Uh, I'm really excited, but uh, I just think land parties are really cool because you know just kind of brings everyone together. Uh, I'm gonna be stingy and not bring a setup, but you know that's that's cool. I'll let other people bring them, but yeah, that's that's kind of my press why for the week. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think. Do you have any other thoughts uh, on our podcast or gaming or? Uh, all the all the uh, sex you've had recently. What's what's going on? Uh, yeah, me and my Metroid Prime have been going hard. Yeah, if you want know. me to go into gaming, I can, I'm going to give you the whole timeline of Fire Emblem. So nope, nope, get we're ready not to doing that. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this week, or listening, rather, and I guess watching uh, this week's episode of the Press Y podcast. Uh, thank you for staring gonna, at that blank screen. Yeah, well, actually... Well, there, there are a couple pictures of now 46, and Yeah, there's a couple of pictures. But, uh, yeah, so m- be sure to follow us on Twitter. Follow Emerson on Twitter. He doesn't post anything, but that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I have so, one, though. Hey, yeah, follow everybody on Twitter. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Ring the notification bell. Like this video. All that fun stuff. You know you know the drill. And if you don't know the drill, then uh, start knowing the drill. And make sure you share this video with your friends so that uh, we, get, we gain subscriber and we gain cash money. All right, thank you guys very much for listening. I uh, hope you have a wonderful week. Um, Press Y on happiness. Press Y on happiness. I love it. All right, see you guys. Goodbye.